Many people have never been mentored in the supernatural, never been mentored in understanding dreams, and as a result, they're missing so much that God has for them, never been mentored on how to cooperate with angels, what angels do, what they're not supposed to do, what, how to tell a counterfeit from the real thing, how to tell the sources of your dreams. If you're like me, if I have a specific uh, literal dream, I'm pretty good at that. But when it comes to dreams that are symbolic, uh, you know, my guest, James Gall, has spent a lifetime understanding the supernatural, and now he's developed two books to mentor you with. One is on angels, the other is understanding your dreams. Very simplistic, but there's literally on these books an anointing to be able to go to that next step with God in the supernatural. Uh, James, why is it important for us to understand how to cooperate with angels? Wow, that is awesome. You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that if we'll just even entertain angels in the right way, show hospitality to strangers is what it says. It says you're going to entertain angels unaware. So guess what? Sometimes you're actually having an engagement with the supernatural in a natural form. And you don't even realize it. And you don't even realize it. But you know, you can cultivate spiritual sensitivity and you can grow in your capacity to cooperate and learn and grow in these areas. Tell me about your son. You, your wife knew about your son before you knew about your son. <laughs> yeah. Now, we've had uh, supernatural healing, first of all, to kind of back up. My wife and I weren't able to have children. Some of people have heard these testimonies before, but it was medically impossible for us to have kids. And my wife had two surgeries by the top infertility specialist years ago at the Kansas University Medical Center. And then we had a bona fide miracle where the fire and the heat of God went into her midsection. She got prayed for by a dear man named Mahesh Shavda who knows Jesus. And it was the ministry of Jesus through this dear man. And the heat went into her midsection and a pulling and a stretching happened on the inside. And that which was impossible was now made possible. And we ended up then with four miracle children. And along the way, the Lord gave us dreams. And one of them was, he said, you'll have a son and his name will be called Justin. And so this is where we learned the lessons of prophetic intercession. We call it praying the revelation into being. And I just want to say, man, this is so simple and it's God's an equal opportunity employer. What he did for us, he wants to do for others. But you were actually told the name of your child in advance. Tell me about that. Oh yeah, and again on Justin, you know, was in a dream. And then right after he was born, only two weeks later, the Holy Spirit wakes me up. <laughs> it's so awesome, Sid. In the middle of the night, I go out into our you know, living there, room. There, you know, James, I, I have to interrupt <laughs> I love you. This. There is nothing more exciting than having the Holy Spirit talk to us. Oh, it's there, there's awesome. There's not, not a close second. No, I, I, I just love it. He comes in what I call, he invades our uncomfortable zones, you know. And so anyway, he came and he spoke to me. He says, it was two o'clock in the morning. And he said, I want you to go out into the living room and I have a surprise I want to show you. I didn't know what the surprise was. So I go out there, sit on our little couch, and across our small living room was a, a piano, you know, in the natural. And shoo, in an open vision, a young girl appears on the, sitting on the piano bench playing the piano. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I want to introduce you to your daughter. Her huh. name will be called Grace Ann Elizabeth. And she'll be tender, sensitive, musical, and emotional, and you will learn much through her. <laughs> that, that is so fascinating it to is, me. It's so it? wonderful to yeah. me. Now, a lot of people are afraid of uh, angels disguised, uh -huh. uh, yeah. or demons disguised as an angel of That's light. True. How do they know the difference? Well, first of all, by the fruit that is born by the experience. You know, and so does it create bondage or does it create freedom? Is there an exaltation of Yeshua, that's Jesus, the Jewish and Gentile Messiah? 
Does it center in the Word of God? Does it bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit? And you know, the scriptures say that you can test the spirits to see if they be of God. And it just tells us that if it's of the Holy Spirit of God, that it will say that Jesus, Yeshua, has come in the flesh. And if it's not of the true Holy Spirit nature, it cannot confess. So you ask that question. You literally ask that question. You better believe it because the Word of God says to do it, and I'm going to do what the Word says. And, and I will ask if an, if an appearance happens, and a vision or some form of a, some type of an angelic encounter, and I'll ask, I'll say, you must confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is in the book of 1 John. It's in Scripture. And so absolutely, and they will love, it's, if they're of God, they want to worship Jesus. And if it's not, believe me, they run in terror. You know, one of the things I love about your book, uh -huh. but our books for that yeah. matter, is of course the one on angels. Yeah. Uh, you did quite an extensive study of angels. Uh, uh, they're mentioned quite a bit in scripture. Absolutely, I actually, over three different decades, I studied the 300 verses in the Bible in the 80s, I did it again in the 90s, and then I did it again just a few years ago. So I've studied scripture. I also have read over 110 books on angels because the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm commissioning you to study and to release my word on the ministry and function of angels. So I studied in the scripture. I studied in history. So, speaking of angels, he had a visitation from yeah. one called Israel Awakening. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. I've felt it before. I've heard it. I've seen it. A glimpse into a realm more real than we could ever know. Can you feel it? the presence of the one who created you. Can you hear it? Deep is crying out to deep. Can you see it? A new world is becoming unveiled. The secrets of the spirit are waiting for you to discover. Sign up now for the free five-part mini course. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with James Gall, and James has been raised up by God to mentor you in the supernatural, especially in the area of dreams and visions and angels. And speaking of angels, well, there's one that intrigues me that you met. I'd like to meet him. His name is Israel Awakening. That's Explain, right. tell me the circumstances. Well, it was just about a year ago, and one of the things that's so interesting, Sid, I was in Long Island, New York. Long Island. Yes, I mean, you know, right outside of New York City, the most highly populated Jewish city in the world, okay? And I was there in worship, and I was at this particular Open Heavens conference. And, and it's quite a story, but the Holy Spirit, while I was in Franklin, Tennessee at home before I was leaving, he kept saying to me, the winds are coming, the winds, the voice, internal voice of the Holy Spirit just kept saying, the winds are coming, the winds and my fire are coming, the winds are coming. I can remember it just right now so well. And so I eventually I get on my flight to go and literally in the natural, first of all, there was winds that came and, and I got to Baltimore, but all of the airports up and down the entire East Coast got shut down because the winds, the <laughs> winds came. It was like 140 knots an hour. It was just fierce winds. Mm -hmm. I had to stay all night in Baltimore, made it the next day, got there. They had to change the order of the conference. While I'm there, then in worship, again, a wind comes into the meetings and it passes right by me. And man, I'm checking out, I'm going, wow, is this like some ventilator somewhere? What is this wind that's blowing across me? I go back into the place of worship and I felt like the temperature in the room change. And it went from cool and it just got warm in the room. And it's like, see the book of Hebrews in the first chapter, the seventh and the 14th verses, it says that the ministering spirits, the angels, are like the winds of God, and they're the flames of fire. 
and they are sent to minister unto those who inherit salvation. So we find in Scripture that angels can show up in the form of like wind and fire. Right. So the wind came, and then as I'm in worship, and I open up my eyes, and the atmosphere was permeated with what I call the destiny of God. And as I'm looking... I right love that, the destiny of God. <laughs> I do too. In fact, this purpose, this show right now is pregnant with the destiny and the purpose of God. And if people will just lean in right now, they can tap in for their own life into prophetic destiny and the spirit of revelation upon their own lives. And, and as I'm worshiping, I then look and there was an angel that was hovering right in front of me. It had a white satin type garment on. It had a gold sash that came from the left shoulder down to the right. And it had just blown a shofar like a trumpet in my face. And let me tell you, I was like alert and at attention, you know. <laughs> Obviously. And then I'm looking on this gold sash. And, and I could read, and on the name that I believe is the name of that angel, it said, Israel Awakening. What does that mean? Well, you know, one of the things that was amazing was that the man who was the host of the conference had just written, and I wrote all this down on, I, I, then after I, I write all this down, the host of the conference had also written down a piece of paper. We did not check notes with each other. He had written down that an angel had just come with James Gall and its name was Israel Awakening. God wanted you to know for sure. And he wanted, he confirms his word and he'll do it for other people. Three times in the scripture it says that God will confirm his word by the witness or testimony of two and three. And that's what he did that night. So I get up there and I had to speak and then I later I started describing this and this young man, the host of the conference says, stop, stop, you don't understand. He brings up his piece of paper and he shows that he had written down the very thing that I had just pronounced. Mm. So what does that mean? I believe in threefold said, I believe that God's eyes, according to scripture, Israel is the apple of God's eye or the pupil of his eye and his love is set towards Israel. But an Israel awakening angel, I believe has just been released to number one, to the body of Christ, to awaken us towards our role and place of praying for and loving Israel. Number two, to the Jewish people worldwide, an awakening is coming. It's like Paul the Apostle talked about blinders coming off of people's eyes that they can behold and see Yeshua, Jesus as the Messiah. So worldwide there is a fresh move where Jewish people are going to be finding Yeshua, Jesus, is their Messiah. And the third thing I believe is that there's coming into Israel itself the greatest awakening the land has ever known to its own purpose and destiny and beholding and seeing Yeshua, how lovely He is. And with signs and wonders, an unprecedented move of God in Israel, the Jewish people worldwide, and amongst the body of Christ. Well, James, as I told you earlier, I can confirm it for Israel. I just yeah. got back from Israel. I had a group of meetings. In one meeting, so many Holocaust survivors got physically healed. These are Jewish people 80 years plus That's of age. Awesome. 30 of them were in one meeting. And because so many of them got healed, something like 28 of them stood up and made professions of faith to the Messiah. Oh, in another awesome. meeting, a word of knowledge came forth. There was a head Satanist priest wow. there who was involved in adultery and this guy came forward. He had this tattoos wow. for Satanism sure. on. And then I said, is there anyone else involved in Satanism mm -hmm. or things similar to this? And something like another 30 people came forward. Awesome. They all got set free and be became believers in the Messiah. Listen, Israel yeah. is awakening. Don't go away because James is going to be cut loose to prophesy in just a moment. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! We now return to It's Supernatural! 
Hello, Sid Roth here with James Gall, and I'm thinking about a word that James said to me when we were having dinner last night. James said he sees disruptive technology coming on the scenes. What do you mean by that? Well, just like it was in the agricultural society primary and the shift to the industrial, and it was just a big disruption, but in a positive way. And now, or just think about the internet. What the World Wide Web has done, it changed society. The way we think and all of this, well, this year, we're crossing a threshold where the Holy Spirit has been releasing for a whole period of time prophetic anointings. But I'm talking now upon inventors, innovators, scientists, medical breakthroughs, disruptive technologies where God has been working on the character of the people. So they could handle it. So they could handle the influence, the finances, and the pressure. It's character to carry the gift. And it's no problem for God to release a gift or a revelation. Sure. But He wants to bring both together. I'm convinced we've crossed a threshold where there's tried and tested people who have gone through the fire of circumstances and now in this period of time there is new technologies. One of them is going to be in a medical science breakthrough is in this area of cancer where there is going to be both the healing divine miracles being released but just like there was tuberculosis or whatever was like you know, rapid, or just rabid around the, the nations. And then it's not as strong today. Well, there's been breakthroughs. There is this year medical scientific breakthroughs by the Spirit of God in Revelation, both in healing divine miracles and in scientific breakthroughs so that masses are going to be healed of cancer. What do you see going on in the energy field? I mean, this is a critical problem for the world. It absolutely is. There's two things that I see. Number one, and this will be disruptive, and it's going to be glorious and fun at the same time, okay? There are going to be places where oil has not been located in the past, and it's almost sort of like God's just sort of like taking the globe like this, and He's just kind of like shifting it a little bit. And, and it's like there is going to be new finds in different locations so that, like in particular, the U.S. or other places will not be dependent in a wrong way upon Middle Eastern oil. But there is also going to be this, it's the time for new forms of energy to be released. I'm referring to everything from like um, uh, issues of scientific breakthroughs in fusion, I'm talking about things that I don't have an understanding about and quantum physics to where it's like God's just like and man is like reaching up into heaven and just bringing down into the earth realm. There is going to come sources of energy from out of the earth itself and, and, it's going, and the ground itself is going to bring forth new energy finds that will and be beyond oil. It will be something different, something new. There is going to come from out of the ocean. There is going to be new sources of energy that's going to come. And there's going to be released, like uh, for third world countries in particular, like a desalination type process where water, it isn't only just going to be pumping it forth from out of the earth, but where water is going to become crystal clear and clean, and this is going to help many, many, many From nations. From what I understand, there's really a critical water shortage, yeah. even sometimes in the United States. No, absolutely, but the Lord is releasing at this hour. He has got believers, believers, because this is a part of what we call the transfer, but it's the creation of wealth for kingdom purposes. And some of the people that these breakthroughs are being given to are people who have God's heart for the poor. Would you prophesy? Yeah. Look in the camera and prophesy as God speaks to you right okay. now. Thank you, Sid. You know, I want to speak right now to those who are on kidney dialysis. I have just been brewing on this. It's like I'm a little Holy Ghost 
coffee percolator right now. <laughs> and I feel this like it's in the Hebrew uh, word, it's called naba or nabyet, and it's a bubbling up, a bubbling up. And I feel this, I feel it, I feel it, and I see it. And I just speak right now that there's some who are on kidney dialysis. They're going to hear this word, and right now there is a supernatural surge of faith rising up on the inside of you. And there is a fire that's starting to come. <laughs> it just got released, uh, if you want to know. And it just got released. And I feel a fire that's going into some people's almost like a blood circulation system. And there's some blood disorders that's getting healed. Uh, and so this deals with the kidney issues, but there's over leukemia. Uh, I just feel uh, uh, this uh, heat actually got rushing around in my blood system right now. And I just speak forth for kidneys to be healed in Jesus' name. And again, some of you who have been on dialysis, you're not going to need it. In about three days from now, you're going to know that you know that you know, and it's going to be medically confirmed. But this other issue, there's, there's like a Holy Spirit fire that's going into bloodstreams of people's bodies, taking out like uh, lead poison type issues, toxins, it's toxins. There's filters. Filters are being like a Holy Spirit filters are, are going into people's bloodstreams and filtering out toxins that have created a, a infirmity. But right now I take authority in the name of Yeshua over the generational spirit of infirmity that has been hindering some of you. There's disease issues that goes back three generations. In the name of Jesus, I speak to that leukemia, and I speak to these blood disease, these blood disorders in the name of Jesus. And I say, lift off. Just lift right now. There's heat flashes that's coming on people's uh, uh, minds, their bodies. It's coming and it's resting on their, their, on their heart area. It's coming down into their, their stomach region. Right now there's a healing dimension. It's going into the stomachs in particular. Oh, I remember I saw this last night. Uh, Sid asked us to pray and, and I saw this when I went to sleep last night. I, I saw like a six inch small intestine that is like it's beyond irritable bowel syndrome and it's a colonitis. And, and the person is scheduled, or about to be scheduled, for a, uh, a, a surgery to cut out their small intestine and then at least temporarily have like an ileostomy. I just say there is a restoration work that is going on right now in the small intestine and there's a, a, a healing that's going into uh, diabetes issues. Uh, that's, you know, that's still with the blood and all of that, going into diabetes and the kidneys and it's going into um, I can just feel this, you know, on me. Right now, I just speak the fire of the Holy Spirit to come upon you right in your own living room right now. I speak it over you. Someone is actually taping this on TiVo or whatever that's called, and you're going to end up passing this on to like an aunt and to an uncle who has diabetes, and they're going to have a supernatural encounter as you even tape this and pass it on. Can you believe that? Isn't that awesome? But I feel this heat. It's going in into still into the stomach regions, and there's, there's ulcer issues. And see, sometimes things are real slow and you can give like two words and there's other times it's sort of like, man, you got these deck of cards, you're just like, you know, and that's how I feel right now. So, so just receive right now, right. receive for diabetes, receive right now that ulcerative colitis, that's the word, ulcerative colitis. And I just speak right now, healing is the children's bread. So I just give out fresh bread to you right now. You, you know, James. Name. I, I'm so excited about what God just did, but especially your two mentoring tools. And one of the things I'm reminded of is you have a special Hebrew prayers yeah. that people will pray, not in the Hebrew language, in English, which makes such a difference in their life. And you start out by blessing God. See, the Jewish way is to bless God for, say, food or dreams, etc. But you just bless God. Uh, the Christian way is to say, bless the food. I want you to bless God. Just bless, right now, just bless God. Tell Him how much you love Him. He is so good. He is so good. <laughs>